Coming out of Brooklyn, New York, Tyrone Williams, along with Mr. Magic, was responsible for creating the biggest platform in hip-hop in the mid-80s called Mr. Magic's Rap Attack on WBLS in New York City. That one hip-hop show was responsible for generating millions of listeners across the tri-state area and launching the careers of most legends and icons we revere today. Also known as Fly Tie, and was the founder and owner of Pole Chillin' Records, who launched the careers of Roxanne Shante, MC Shan, Biz Marquis, Big Daddy Kane, and Coogee Rap, to name a few. In this exclusive two and a half hour sit down, Fly Ty Williams will break down his career, his thoughts on music, and will definitely cause some controversy on his thoughts about Leo Cohen, Russell Simmons, and Andre Harrell. He has some incredible stories about the music industry that involve guns, drugs, and violence. Here's a snippet of what's to come. And that, they didn't have them, they didn't, he didn't get the hundred from them. He got the hundred from one chap, right? From the right, publishing company. Right. They don't know nothing about bitch. Right. <laughs> right. So you trying to set them up nice. Right. And then he went and messed it up. Right. <laughs> and you want to blame them. Right. All right. Now, Biz, now that was some sucker shit to me. Right. Because you already got this much from the record deal. Why are you trying to fuck with his publisher money? Right. What's the purpose of that? That means you know, okay. Right. Well, did you ever do anything like that to any of the artists? Never. First, let me tell you something about me. Right. All right. And we could end it here. Let me tell you something. There was an article in People Magazine about me. How long ago? This is 1989, 90. 1989. Because the record industry got mad at me for giving Kane, Biz, G, Shan, and Shante $125,000 for each of their pockets. Tommy Matola was calling me breaking. What are you doing? You're setting a precedent. Right. Russell, yo, Ty. You can't get them niggas $125,000 for their pocket. Right. Not even to produce the album just that they can have. Like an advance. No, I recoup. I never recoup no advance. Right. Just gave it to them. Right. All right. I said, Russell, I just read when you gave LL $200,000. He said $200,000 budget for the album. We gave him about $12,000 for his pocket. Mm. So Cold Chillin' ass got 125000 What was happening, mm -hmm. they buying cars, and got, everybody got apartments, right. townhouses, and all the artists are seeing that. Right. And breaking it and, and on their labels. Look what Cold Chillin' got. So, let me just say this to you. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, Biz on me, there's only one artist on Cold Chillin' don't owe me no money. Can't. Mm -hmm. That's it. Shan owe me 300000 plus. Marley had me audited. Right. His auditors found that he owed me a hundred thousand. Wow. Ace owed me fifty thousand. I mean, they owe me money. Right. If I shoot bids, owe me eight seventy five. Eight hundred and seventy five. Because 000? I I gave him another five hundred for an album he never gave me. Uh. If I shoot bids the head now and go to jail, niggas will understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we ain't gonna do that. Yeah, right, but, but, I, but my point is, point is, my point is, I had these people too much money robbed, but y'all robbed me. Right, right. Straight up. Right. And it don't even take, y'all can't show no numbers, no weird, no nothing that say nothing. I right. can show. Right. What you owe me. And broad, that's, that's, that's broad strokes. Right. If I decide to get intricate, right. you owe me more than that. That's, that's, that's a lot Not of money. only that, hold up, hold up, hold up. Mm -hmm. Coach, once again, I ain't handle the money. Business Affairs did. D. Joseph and Esther. Yeah. They handled the money. I ain't never touched money at all at Coach or LA. Yo, there's a record label, stupid. It's not something I'm doing in my crib. Right, right. When you got checks, you, you got them from D. Right. You asked me. When they came, I get 10 or whatever, I'll have to tell D, okay? Right. But you went and got checks from her. This is a fair like any other record label, that's how I went. Right. You just want to say whatever you want to say because you ain't come the fuck off. Master Ace, you the first return I ever got. I never got one of us like, what the hell going on here? We got oh. returns. Now, you, if it's according to your math, you don't think, well, I sold 75,000 units. Okay. 
You sold seventy-five thousand. That means seventy-five thousand dollars to you. Right. You also say I gave you a twenty-five thousand dollar advance. Okay, that means fifty left. Video. You supposed to pay half. I pay half. Video at least fifty thousand. Twenty-five. Studio. At least fifty thousand. Now you owe twenty five. Now you owe twenty five. <laughs> How the hell did it come that way? So you just based on and you just think this? Right, right. Not even on the numbers that you gave. I went to college where your college didn't teach you shit. <laughs> really? You are you stupid? Right. You just wanna do that that's just let me tell you, you know what that is? Like all of them old school artists who get they got a wife and kids or whatever. How come dad you they robbed me? You just didn't it was whack. Right. That, and, and then he told a lie that I told Monica Meacham, who was, I made Monica Meacham works for me. And who's this you talking about? Monica Meacham works for no, me. Ace, Master, Master Ace. Master Ace. Got I it. asked Monica Meacham to, to manage Ace. Right. She worked for me. He said that I told Monica Meacham I didn't manage him. He couldn't be in the juice school. No, you couldn't be in the juice school because Magic thought you was whack. Mm. Mad and, and, and Love Buck Starsky. Right. They said, what? That nigga can't be in the juice school. You gotta have skills. Right. You got on Symphony because Sham wouldn't do it. Right. Come on. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> you go, all right. Really? I signed. Didn't you tell people that Marley signed you? Marley couldn't have signed Stevie Wonder. Now that's what I did. Right. I signed Ace because his mother asked me to sign. Right. His mother, he lived around the corner from me. Well, he still got a career today. Listen, have nice. Right. Beautiful. I'm happy for it. Beautiful. I'm telling you how I signed him. Right. His mother lived around the corner for me. She was What I'm saying, what, what I mean by that is. All of them got careers right. today. Because of you. That's what right, I'm saying. Right, right. I got you. But That's all of them I got mean. careers today. All right. right. And I'm with you. Right. You should be thanking me for making you be able to eat today. Right. That's what I'm getting at. Because if you had, if it wasn't for me, you could not feed your wife and your daughter. Right. Unless you're working somewhere else. Right. I ain't gonna say you couldn't have fed him, but you know, but I knew his, his, his Betty, who the girl I was with, uh -huh. she came and told me about his mom. I met his mother, rest her soul. All right, she said to me, my son goes to the University of Rhode Island. He's not like these other rappers. He's raps intellectual rap. Right. I was fascinated by, I wanted a college kid. Right. I was gonna sign a sight unseen. Right. He telling people Mar Marley was mad. Sign all these Flatbush niggas. Flatbush cats was mad at me. They thought Ace was a bum. Mm. I lived in, that's why I lived in Flatbush. And Ace was originally from Brownsville. Right. So they breaking about me signing Ace. I, I suffered a lot for him. Right. So for him not to come to me and say, thank you for what you did for me, Ty, something wrong with you. Right. Something's wrong with you. Let you can't you. and you can't right. count. <laughs> you can't count. Good. Let me ask you this last question. What do you think of 360 deals now? 360 deals are necessary because you can't make money selling records. Right. You got I mean it's it's, it's, it's an entertainment company more than a record company now. Would you ever get back into starting a record company? Never and never in life. Never? Never. And I wanna say something else too about me managing and having artists on my label. First of all, I was managing them first. I had no label. Right. When I started a label, I started to, let me tell you the, what I, the, the hell I caught from signing Kane and Biz and them. But the Phyllis 4 was furious. Mm. Why so? Because they was juice group. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, you ain't signed with them niggas. <laughs> That's the new hot niggas. That's uh, but that about. didn't matter. Right. You know what I'm saying? Who them? OC, Crazy A, they was all mad at me. Right. I'm signing them. I had to sign DLB just because. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right, so the whole thing with them, you know, and, 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 I, and I think they're grateful. Kane made mistakes. Sham made mistakes. But they've all called and apologized to me. Right. Kane, Sham. G, I say G's life, period. Period. He did brain surgery. I done flown to NYU by helicopter. Uh. Russell would have never done no shit like that. He was at some South Amboy Hospital. They called me. You know Nathaniel Wilson? Yeah. Well, he needs brain surgery. What? Call his mother. We did. She said, call you. 
I said, cause I call her back, she's hysterical. Ty, please take care of my baby. I call back. So I'm like, can I speak to the surgeon? The nigga says to me, the surgeon ain't here. I was gonna hang around and do it. I was gonna hang around and do it? That, now I know what it is. Right. Okay, you weren't experiment on some black kid's head. Right. I said, can I call you right back? I said, do you have a heliport? Yes, we do. But it's gonna cost a whole lot of money. Right. So I said, how much? He said, $1,500. Now I definitely know what he's talking about. Right. I call NYU, because I just seen, well, I, forgot, I don't know if it was Henry Kissinger or somebody had been heliported right. to NYU. Right. Not NYU, New York Hospital. Right. And they, were the, they had the best neurosurgeon department right. in America. I called them. I had them on the phone when I called back the hospital. So they're talking to the doctor. All right, have them on the helipod. The helicopter is on its way. Flies G-Rap to New York Hospital, saves his life. Had I been Russell Simmons and a doctor called me, I'd have said, do whatever you got to do. Wouldn't have, Russell wouldn't have sent no helicopter for him at all. At all. Now, now, now g raps downfall was also, Polo was the ambassador. Let me tell you the difference. We'd be in California. g rap would come to my room. You tired. This nigga the head of the blood. <laughs> That's G. Polo would come to my room with a white girl and say, Yo, Todd, she's the PD at the TV station. Polo working. Right. G trying to get down with the people in his records. You know what I'm saying? He started living that life. Right. You know? And that's what was the, and his entourage was too big. And you know, your entourage do something bad, you did it. Right. So, Hot 97, I'm, I'm consulting Hot 97. I'm putting the records on. And they wouldn't let me put you at records on. <laughs> what's the What's the most money you made with Ch Cold Chillin'? I don't know. I made my money from, from Warner Bros. I can't say a price. I can tell you what I paid niggas. <laughs> right. <laughs> what do you pay Kane? I, Kane, I was, Kane was getting million dollar checks. Right. G Rap? G Rap ain't never sell like you're supposed to. Right. G Rap was another IU. Right. Hard headed, wild, always got gangsters cursing out senior VPs. If a female, they right. say something slick to her, she don't respond. She right. a bum bitch. <laughs> Craig G. Craig G was was not really Craig G only had a record with me. Dropping signs? That Dropping was signs. Then he went right. to Atlantic, ran his mouth and didn't realize who Sylvia Rome was. Right. And she dropped his ass. Right. All right, uh, Trap, there was, there was, now there was a part, see, Marley, I gotta tell you this story. Right. About Marley. First time I met Marley's mother, she told me the chicken leg in the pocket story. She told you who? Chicken leg in the pocket story. What's that? Go ahead and tell you. <laughs> she said, every time I used to wash the kid's clothes, Marley always had chicken leg in his pocket. I'm like, the first time, this boy. The second time, it happened again. So the third time, I'm gonna watch and see how he get this chicken leg in his pocket. I'm thinking that he just was trying to sneak and put chicken leg for later. And right. he forgot. So she watched Because now Marley got about seven, eight brothers. Some right. of his family, similar, not brother. Right. One brother, that's good. Gotcha. She watched. Wait till he get down like maybe three, four pieces. He'd take one and put it in his pocket. And never think about the chicken leg. And she said to me, and this was a threat to me from his mom. She said, he didn't take the chicken leg because he wanted it for himself. He took the chicken leg because he didn't want them to have it. <laughs> and she said to me, my son gonna put a chicken leg in his pocket. I'm telling you before you get involved with him. So you know now. So don't come to me later on and tell me he put the chicken leg in his pocket. Right, <laughs> right. I'm telling you. Right. So you can make a decision now whether you want to. That's Marley. Or not. All right. Marley took Craig G and to Atlantic, snuck him over there. Right. All right. Not because he wanted them, because he didn't want me to have them. Right. Same thing he did with tragedy. Him and Alonzo. But Alonzo was a money guy. Right. Alonzo Brown worked for me. Right. Uh, he's he's the, the executive producer for Judge Mathis now. Right. He just that's, the, that's the brother that used to be partners with Andre Harrell. In the rap group. Right. But his first, his first record company job was me. Right. He was my, Maverick, Alonzo was my first employee. Wow. All right. Yeah, I remember and when then I, he was an executive at A and M at one point, right? After I put him out, way after how that right. happened, he was with me for a year. Then I got Warner Bros. to hire him, right? In publicity. Then I got them to hire him at A and M, right? So that's how he ended up over there. Wow. 
Right. At the same time, he was writing scripts, so he got okay. involved in movies, you know. But when A and M, when, when they took um, Tragedy, see, what I understood was Atlantic and A and M can't do nothing with hip hop. They don't. They just think it's they're gonna win with. But it's, there's, there's, there's an art to this. Right. They don't know what to do. They don't, they're gonna let you make the records you want to make, and it's just gonna be not what it shows. Right. And I always had me and Magic and Marley had a radio ear. Right. We knew what could play. Yeah, it's nice in the street, but that's not going to play on the radio. Right. You understand? So now, like I said, getting back to Marley taking stuff, because he just don't want us to have it. He take Craig G, gas Craig G to say something ugly about Atlantic. He said something ugly about Atlantic, and they drop it. Wow. Tragedy, you turn your name to Intelligent Hulam. I don't like that. That should not be in your name. What the right. hell is that? All right. You, then Marley leaves him over there. Now, Alonzo was working at A&M. Right. That's how they, that was their end. Right. Now, so you know who Alonzo Brown is. And I said about Shantae, she could talk to you about anything. She used to take, Benny Medina, she used to have him wrapped around her fingers. She used to dick tease him to no end. Uh. All right. So one day I'm with Shantae, let me take you to dinner time. Now, Shantae is my daughter. Right. Period. Period dot. Let me take you to dinner. Take her to dinner. She takes me to dinner. She pulled out this credit card. A black American Express. I got a platinum one. Uh -huh. <laughs> the black American Express says Benny Medina. I said, what you doing with Benny's card? Oh, it's okay, it's okay. You let me have it. She signs it, Mrs. Benny Medina. Right. Now she's doing all this. Now I, I know Shiny. Right. She gonna get him for the gusto at some point. Right. She only spending 500 and then 15. She gradually going up. Right. So I know she gonna get him. And I know it's gonna come back on me when she does it. Right. Shantae, now let me tell you how one of us treated Roxanne Shantae like she was Madonna. Really? What? So when she come to the airport Rolls Royces, that's how they treated her. She wasn't selling no records, but her name was big. Right. Now, I said, Lons, listen, I'm sending you out there with Shantae. Whatever you do, make sure she gets all her appointments, everything she has to do. But well, that main thing, don't let her get Benny Medina's credit card. Two weeks go by, yeah, I did. Get a call from the chairman, more so. Tyrone, it, Roxanne Chante uh, spent $40,000 on Benny Medina's credit card. What that got to do with me? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a cold, chilling artist. So now, Chante's still only 17. Right. So I said, let me stop you right there, Mo. <laughs> all right. First of all, Benny gave her that car because he's trying to knock the boots. You don't know what that means? He's trying to get the pussy. Right. Secondly, she's only 17. What? <laughs> right. Oh, never mind. <laughs> but I'm still heated. Right. He's like hell. Lon, I, I tell my the receptions, Dolores, when they come with, when Lon's come to work, tell them to bring his ass straight to my office. Right. And she used to call me Big Cheese on. Big Cheese, I want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't happy. <laughs> right. Lon's coming off. Now, this is Alonzo Brown, so you know. Lon's, I told you not to let her get that credit card. That's what I sent you out there for. Know where you go? But, Ty, uh, she spent 10000 on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, he at A&M, he, he get... Um, they give him thirty thousand out of they sh out of, of Marley's share to get get uh, Craig G. Craig, no tragedy sign. Right. right. So he does that. Right. That's it. That's Harlem. Right. Like he, he's that Harlem getting money, whatever. Whatever. Right. That's Harlem. All right. So, um, Marley. Uh, that's how what happened with Craig G. and Tragedy. All right. Marley was 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 even with him and Magic. There was always a little conflict there at the end. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Which is, you know, which is why Marley ended up getting, I mean, Magic ended up getting Mr. C. Right. As his DJ. You know, get, let Marley go get Mr. C. Right. All right. Um, but let me just say this. The whole experience for me, I'm, I'm, I feel fortunate to have lived that. Right. All right. Um, I feel fortunate to have been able to meet such, so many people with such talent. You understand? I mean, talent. You know, and they were kids with talent. And I always say that, not just my artists, but the rappers of the 80s, 
they can compare to any of the black renaissance writers of the early 20th century. Langston Hughes, Life of Me Ain't Been No Crystal Stair, Coogee Rap, Road to the Riches. I used to stay on the block selling cooked up rock. All right. They're both talking about how hard life was for them. Right. All right. All of these, KRS, Rakim, all these guys, Poobah, all of them, they had something to say and they could write. And they were young and the whole key in school education, they trying to get you to learn how to write. Right. And all of these kids, and I had the fortunate, uh, the, the, the fortune of, of being around all of them, like I said, not just, and then raised by being in radio, I was a, not just cold chilling, everybody. Right. Their styles, their lives, what they wrote about was, whether it was girls or their block or whatever, they could put it into, not just into, on paper, they could make it a song. Right. That ain't easy. That's not easy. I don't, you can see people who have all kinds of degrees can't write like that. 